Okay, so this technique is going to be all about texture and how we use texture in our design. So in this one, I've applied some texture to the background to give it an impasto kind of look. And this one, I really like this one a lot. I used a palette knife and created texture with this by pulling this direction and creating the layers like this, letting it dry and painting over it. Now, um, when I did this one, they uh, DecoArt had a texture paste of some kind that I used. Um, they have this one, this is a traditions one. And it's the only one that I have that is texture besides our metallic ones. And they have other textures out there. This one you can add paint to and apply it that way. But this one dried uh, white. No. Yeah, I think it dried white, but I was painting white underneath this anyway. So that worked out well. And then I have also done texture on this one up here. Another, uh, like, faux stone look and I did it down here on this stuff. I taped off. I do have a surface that is actually this shape but when I created this design I didn't have a surface uh, cut for it yet but I do have this particular surface and I taped off around it and then did my texture stuff in those areas and uh, I think it turned out really good on that piece. Now this piece has texture two different ways. Back here I textured using a stencil and then while uh, I still had the stencil on it I applied a little bit of paint in with my texture medium and got some really cool effects back in there. This other texture is quick wood um, that will be a technique some other time that I will show you how to use the quick wood if you have never used it. It is an awesome product, but I have my stones. I have the tag on the cat. The pumpkin is text wood. The bolt is quick wood and the uh, bolts in his necks. The pumpkin, the bolts, and the stones and the tag are all quick wood and it just gives it that extra dimension in there. Makes it super cool and fun and playful. So I did that on there and then again texture in the background to get that faux look in the background and then painted like the bricks and stuff on there. This I actually just hand painted these bricks. It's not a stencil. S super easy to do but I could have made these stones around this also textured or made them textured in this smooth you know you can work it out however it looks best for you and then this one I did texture on I did the palette knife texture over here just gave it a rough texture and then I did a stencil texture right through here where I just did the texture through the stencil so with the products that I have I'm gonna try and show you how to do a little bit of that um, oh, and this I did texture on. I wanted to create a um, color wheel. And I have these palette surfaces, and I thought, what a fun way to create a color wheel. So I did some texture. Um, I used this texture medium on it, which dries kind of clear when you don't add paint to it. And um, actually, this is, this is how it dries. So I just used my palette knife and put some little, like, blobs on there. And then I came back with my paint and painted those blobs. A couple of coats and then I did some washes coming from them out. And then so you have your color wheel. You have these five colors. One, two, three, four, five. And then you have these five colors. One, two, three, four, five. And so we can see the opposite for each color on here. What is their complementary color? So you go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's how that's how you get your opposites, the complementary colors. Okay, and that was fun. That was with some some of this uh, deco art texture medium. 
which is all I had on hand at the time. But you can create texture with gessos, and you can add color to these gessos. Um, I'm going to use this one and show you a couple of things. I'm going to um, texture a word on this one. I'm going to put Mary on it. Take that down. I don't want it to move because you have to use your palette knife to create the texture on here. So I'm just going to tape this stencil up here and hopefully that's straight. And then I'm going to take this texture medium right here. Let me grab some scrap paper. Okay, I've got some scrap paper under here. I'm going to just use my palette knife and get a little bit of this on here. I think I'm going to put it down on a plate and then kind of scoop it across my palette knife. And then I'm going to add an angle. I'm going to skim this across. fill in, get some more. Like I said, you can add uh, a color to this, but I'm going to do something else to it. You want to make sure you go at an angle so that keeps it from getting underneath your stencil, hopefully. A little bit more on that Y there. Let me see if that's got it textured enough. Oh yeah, that is so awesome. Let me lay this over here somewhere where there's no paint. <laughs> I'm gonna go clean that pretty quickly. But now I wanna do something to this that is a little fun. I'm gonna put it on this plate. While it's wet, I'm gonna take my glitter and sprinkle my glitter in that. And that texture will dry clear and then the glitter will be all in it. And we have this beautiful textured message. You can put other things on here as well. I think on this one I might do a couple of snowflakes on it. So let me grab my snowflake stencil and um, find a couple of small ones that I can work with. Again, I want to take this down because I don't want it to move as I pull my palette knife across it. And be careful, I think I might tape that edge because knowing me, I'll get it out there past the edge and then I'll have a mess. Okay, so at an angle, skim it across. Yeah, I'm way out there. Let me turn it this way. nice textured snowflake don't get too much and get carried away I'll put another one on here real quick because I want more than one on here don't get into your wet one there Again, this is the uh, Traditions texture medium that you can add paint to. I want to make sure my stencil is flat. Oop, I just lifted my stencil so I probably messed up my snowflake there. Not too bad. And then I'll put uh, another small one wherever I can get a small one. I'll just put it right here. And then I'm going to take my stencil as soon as I get my glitter on to my sink and clean it out a little bit at an angle. Skim it across there. That's a... Oh. I got too much on there, so I got a little glob of glob of glitter down there, or a texture medium down there that I don't really want to have. 
I'm going to bring this over and I want to work on this while it's wet so if you can't make your snowflakes fast enough to keep the um, texture medium wet just do one at a time glitter it let it dry and come back and do another one Okay. Then any glitter that's out here that you don't want to have out here in the background area, when this is dry you can take a soft brush and very gently brush that away. But look how fun that is. Oh my goodness gracious. I love the texture mediums and what you can do with it. You can also create some textured flowers with your textured medium. Oh, get texture all over me. So like with this one here, let me read the instructions on it for you. It says create impasto or textural effects and increase visible brush strokes with this matte non-yelling sanding medium. You can mix it with Traditions Artist acrylics, apply with a palette knife or a stiff brush. So if you've painted something and it's a smooth finish but you want it to look like a brush stroked artist canvas, you can use this on it. Now the gesso, gesso makes a good texture background like for doing this kind of stuff through here with your palette knife and um, when you do it with, let's see if I got, I'm just gonna bring this over real quick. Um, when you do it on your surface you generally do it before you paint but this can be mixed with paint as well I believe it's it is a primer use as a primer to seal and add to to most surfaces for maximum acrylic and oil paint adhesion water based acid free fast drying opaque matte finish smooth extremely flexible and highly pigmented for superior coverage in one coat can be tinted with media fluid acrylic or thinned with water to desired consistency. But um, you can just use this on your background and just skim your palette knife across like I did on this house. I was kind of testing it out on the house here and just skim it. Skim it. And I was also testing making roses with it using a paintbrush. So now I made some textured roses and I just used a paintbrush and so I can come in and then paint those roses in and they'll be they'll be textured. This is just with the um, texture medium but I didn't add any paint to it but if I had added paint to it those roses would stand out more but I can also come back and paint them and they'll have some texture to them like this thing that I painted. So texture is a really cool thing to add to your canvas and don't worry about me painting all over this. This was just a scrap piece of uh, mat board. So I'm not too worried about painting on it, but you can get all these beautiful textures in the background with that. You can also use this, um, if you want to, this, this Media Gesso or this Traditions Gesso. They are very similar. Um, this one says um, seal and add tooth to most surfaces for maximum traditions artist acrylic adhesion smooth extremely flexible and highly pigmented for superior coverage in one coat dries to a matte finish apply with a brush or palette knife let dry before painting but you can add it to um, your winter scenes like your trees if you want some some snow on your trees I don't have my piece over here that I practiced earlier but um, if you have a tree that, you know and your branches are on there and you want to build some snowy texture on your trees I, I should move this up so you could see it <laughs> you want to build some snowy textures on your trees I'm sorry I didn't I put my other stuff away that I did earlier, but you can come in here and just tap some of this on your trees for some beautiful snowy texture and add some dimension to your trees. You can always come back and paint white on top of it, but this is a pretty opaque color and um, 
it makes a wonderful, wonderful, um, oh wait, here's this, hang on. Okay, let me move this. So I, I have this one that I painted my trees on. This is one I tried to put some texture on and it worked out pretty well. On this one you can apply some texture and I'm just going to use the same brush that I painted it in with. This is the Traditions Gesso. I'm going to get a little bit on my brush and then tap it on here just like we did the white paint but this is going to leave the texture on your piece. I think this is such an awesome way to add texture to your snowy trees. So texture is a lot of fun and right now it just looks like extra paint, white paint on there. But as it dries, you'll be able to come back. Oh, that was a lot. You'll be able to come back and feel the texture in the piece. I have to come back with my green paint and fix that maybe. Oh, there we go. So just tap on. Oh, my goodness. Must have way too much on my brush. But just tap on and add that texture right onto your tree. And then when you rub your finger across it, it will be a beautiful, beautiful texture. I know this is just a, <laughs> a demo board, but that kind of bugs me right there. Kind of bugs me. So that is another way that you can add texture to your surface. So those are all fun texture ideas and I really, really, really enjoy using it like this with a stencil with the um, Traditions one because this one will dry clear and then you can put your glitter in there whatever color of glitter that you want to use. Mm -hmm.